This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Stay tuned for a channel update to be discussed at the end of this video. So there are actually a lot of excellent, unique, legendary, and even a couple Seraph and Pearlescent pistols from both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. Uh, honestly, I'm surprised that there are 17 guns on this list as opposed to 9 from the last list on Assault Rifles. So, top 17 best pistols in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, starting now. Number 17. The TD or Quick Shot. So there's a good chance that you haven't heard of this one, but this is the highest damage reload you will get from a non unique TD or pistol in Borderlands 2 and the pre sequel. Uh, this is mainly due to the Vladoff barrel, which gives it a slight edge over other TD or non unique pistols because Vladoff barrels improve your weapon's magazine size. Number 16. The Vladoff Anarchist. The Vladoff Anarchist is a great alternative to both the Infinity, Stinger, and Proletarian Revolution from both games. Uh, it's capable of high fire rates and also has a high magazine size for a pistol. Uh, the best part is that they can be acquired both early on and later on in both games, regardless of your playthrough. Number 15. The Smasher. So this is gun you get early on in Borderlands the pre-sequel for having a save file for Borderlands 2. Uh, while you can't get a higher level version without save editors, it's pretty much a poor man's Maggie pistol with much higher ammo consumption. Uh, it should also be mentioned Gearbox fixed the Smasher skin on March 24th, 2015, so that this skin now displays properly. Number 14. The Party Popper. While this pistol has possibly the worst range of any gun in the pre-sequel, it's actually pretty powerful and might just be one of the most powerful pop guns in any video game. Uh, you will need to beat the Claptastic Voyage DLC, however I would say that it is well worth picking up a party popper. Number 13, The Stinger. The Stinger is a Vladoff Serif pistol and is the sister weapon to the legendary Vladoff Infinity pistol. Uh, the Stinger is slightly better than most Vladoff pistols and has the ability to ricochet off surfaces when fired at a surface. Uh, because the Stinger doesn't have an infinite magazine, it's more suited to an Anarchy Gauge or a Money Shot Salvador because it's possible to fire that last shot. Number 12. The Jacob's Pepper Box. The Jacob's Pepper Box is exclusive to Borderlands the pre-sequel, but can be used in Borderlands 2 uh, with a combination of Cheat Engine and the Give and Save Editor. Uh, the Pepper Box is the Vladoff barreled Jacob's Pistol, and regular versions always have a times 2 multiplier, while twofer versions always have a times 3 multiplier. Uh, like all non-unique weapons, the Pepper Box can drop from any loot source in Borderlands the pre-sequel's Claptastic Voyage DLC. Number 11, The Hornet. This is another one of those guns in Borderlands 2 that I feel deserves some attention. Uh, the Hornet is a phenomenal corrosive doll pistol with splash damage and also benefits from grenade damage bonus. Uh, the only real problem with this thing is that it has a tendency to eat up ammo on higher difficulties and of course only comes in corrosive. Number 10, the Stalker. It's a shame that the Stalker is overlooked as the Stalker has superior fire rate, base damage, reload speed, magazine size, and bullets ricochet when compared to most other Vladoff pistols. Uh, of course the only real downside is that these superior attributes come at a cost as the Stalker's projectiles are pretty slow when compared to most other weapons. Number 9, the Infinity. As much as I like to rag on the Infinity, it's not really a bad pistol at all. Uh, obviously it has an infinite magazine, uh, which means no reloading and no worries about ammo consumption at all. Uh, the Infinity is a popular choice on Zero, as it works well with the one shot, one kill skill and is also pretty nice on Axton with the right class mods, as it's possible to fire rate cap this gun on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of Borderlands 2. Uh, I definitely recommend you pick one up if you see it. Number 8, the Maggie. While somewhat overlooked in favor of other guns, the Maggie is essentially a shotgun in pistol form. Uh, the Maggie sports multiple projectiles per shot, 
with low ammo consumption and a higher critical hit modifier than normal due to it being a Jacobs branded weapon. Uh, while it's not the best pistol in the game, it's certainly no slouch. Number seven, the Taser. The Taser Hyperion pistol is unique to Borderlands the pre-sequel, and it also fires laser projectiles as opposed to normal bullets. Uh, the Taser has high fire rate, high accuracy, and high elemental effect chance, uh, and this pistol works wonders when dual wielded on Nisha because the projectiles have low hit scan. Uh, it's also one of the first weapons you acquire for the Holodome challenge in the pre-sequel. Number six, the Fibber. The Fibber is a unique pistol as it can spawn with a ricochet barrel, a crit barrel, and a slow motions bullet barrel. Uh, the ricochet and crit barrel, however, are great and at one time were quite popular in the Borderlands community. Uh, I recommend picking one up. I just hope that you don't get the slow motion bullets version. Number five, the Grog Nozzle. While this isn't a great gun for dealing direct damage to enemies, it's the best weapon for passive healing, and it's also what makes certain builds on higher level difficulties even viable. Uh, as long as the Grog Nozzle is equipped in hand, most of the damage you deal will heal you, making this pistol perfect for tanking enemies on Salvador. Keep in mind, the Grog Nozzle is exclusive to Borderlands 2. Number four. The Lady Fist. The Lady Fist is probably one of the most powerful weapons in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel as it has a high critical hit damage bonus. Uh, since the high critical hit damage is a passive effect, you can basically increase any weapon's critical hit damage by simply swapping to this gun. Uh, this gun can be used to great effect on Salvador, but can also be used to a lesser extent on other characters with the Twister Shotgun uh, and other high critical hit damage weapons with slow moving projectiles. Number three, the Gunnerang slash Shooterang. Uh, while difficult to use, the Gunnerang and Shooterang are very effective TDO reload weapons and are often overlooked by most players. Uh, that's because it excels when thrown as opposed to being fired like a normal gun. And of course, the name is inspired by both Boomerangs and Batman's Batarangs. Uh, the Gunnerang and Shooterang are both powerful and interesting weapons. Uh, the Gunnerang is exclusive to Borderlands 2, while the Shooterang is exclusive to Borderlands the pre-sequel. Number two, the Unkempt Herald. It's without a doubt that the Unkempt Herald is an incredible weapon. Uh, impressive DPS, high damage, and up to 14 projectiles per shot. Uh, this weapon is absolutely lethal. Uh, unlike other legendary pistols which may require critical hits to deal insane damage, the Unkempt Herald can deal significant amounts of damage, uh, both while scoring critical hits and not scoring critical hits. Uh, thankfully or unfortunately, the Unkempt Herald is exclusive to Borderlands 2. Number 1. The Luck Cannon. I think it's perhaps safe to say that the Luck Cannon is the most powerful pistol in Borderlands the pre-sequel and might be better than the Unkempt Herald from Borderlands 2. Uh, while it's virtually a bolt action pistol because it has one projectile in the magazine, uh, Nisha can expand the magazine size to four and dual wield it, while other characters like Athena and Jack have skills that allow shots fired to not consume ammo. Uh, I also forgot to mention that this gun has a built-in money shot effect, which can significantly increase your damage output. Uh, it's definitely awesome and worth picking up if you can get the luck cannon to drop. Anyway guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the kind of channel update in the intro, uh, I have a Twitter thing and I'm going to link that in the description. Uh, the big reason I'm recommending this to you is because recently on YouTube, uh, some big channels even like I hate everything were just like obliterated from YouTube. Now, he was reinstated, but mainly is kind of like a precautionary thing. If you're all wondering what happens to this channel, I am going to have that Twitter. So... Again, if you want to follow it, it's in the description. If you don't, that is cool too. Uh, but as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.